What's going on guys, RealTouchGML here back with another game maker tutorial and today what we're going to be doing is looking at a flipping our sprites in a more efficient and improved way. So basically I went ahead and a while ago actually I made a video on flipping sprites and it was not the best because uh, it consisted of you know taking copying this, pasting it, taking your image, mirror flipping it, and then using image indexes to actually uh, you know check which way it's facing and and uh, all that fun stuff but this caused a lot of problems because you know what if there is an animation you know okay well now you're gonna need to have two sprites now what if you know uh, you know you didn't want to use image indexes and it was all that I don't know it was just it wasn't efficient so there's actually a much easier and better way to do this. Now, if you'd like to check out my flipping sprites tutorial, the link will be in the description. That was the old one. I'm actually linking this one to that flipping sprite. So if you came from flipping sprites, this is a much better way. All right, so let me go and create an object and we'll have him be the, uh, the sprite that I created and we'll pop him in the room. Okay, and actually let's pop a bunch in the room. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what we're going to use and then I can show you how I do things. Okay. So basically if you go into the create event and you use something called image underscore X scale and I'm going to equal this to choose one or negative one. I'm also going to randomize just for the sake of getting random results. And I go and run the game. What's gonna happen is basically, it's going to choose one or negative one. And depending on that, as you can see, all of the sprites are now facing in a random direction. Not 360 degrees, but the image is actually flipped horizontally and is now looking that way. And compared to the Im this image, it's now looking this way. So. What you can do now, so so that's how you actually flip sprites, and this will work with you know animations, all that fun stuff. So actually, if we went ahead and created an animation here, I'm gonna actually create one real quick. We'll we'll make them blink. How about that? So here's one, where he's about halfway down, and then a fully closed one, and we'll copy and paste that back over. So as you can see, he's blinking. And in the create event, we'll set image speed to equal 0 0.5 and that should be good. So we're going to run it again just to show you that animations do in fact work. So as you can see now some are facing right, some are facing left, but the animation is running and it still works perfectly and it, it's so much easier because now you just need that one sprite that looks to the right and that's it. So now let me show you what I do. So if I go and go into the create event here, and you wouldn't actually have this in game, this is just for purposes of showing you, you know, how to do that. Let's set image speed to equal zero. And what I'm going to do here is create a variable called facing, and it's going to equal one. And basically, what this facing variable does is, if it equals one, then we're looking to the right. If it equals negative one, then we're looking to the left. So if I go ahead and go in the room here and delete all these guys. I'll just leave one in there. And I go into the draw event, and in here I say draw sprite underscore ext extension. So here we're going to say you know sprite index, image index, x y. And now the x scale we're going to say facing. Y scale is one, rotation zero, c white, and alpha is one. So. Now that we have facing in here, what we can do is in the step event, instead of switching image X scale, we can now just switch swap the facing value. So if we say, if keyboard check pressed VK right, facing equals one. If keyboard check pressed VK left, 
facing equals negative one. And if we go and run the game now, try to compile here, and I hit left, we're now looking left and we're now looking right. As you can see, there is a little problem here, and that's because they actually flip dependent on their origin. So we go ahead and go into the sprite here and we center the origin and we run it again, that sh there should be no problem with that. Yep, so there we go. So now you can obviously have walking animations or anything you'd like. Now the facing really serves a purpose and you could use image X scale, but I think facing just organizes it a lot better. And uh, you can actually now use facing dependent on which way he's facing, you know. So if, for example, you wanted to meet with an enemy, you could say if place meeting X plus 15 times facing, then that means whatever's in front of them. So if, if we go to the right 15 pixels and we times it by facing, which would be one, it would be looking 15 pixels to the right, which is what, where we're facing. But if now we're going left, and now it's 15 plus facing, which is negative one, that now changes to negative 15. So it's gonna be checking negative 15 pixels, which is going this way, which is again in front of our player. So that's a little cool little thing that you can do there and really can save you some time without having to retype. Okay, now if he's looking right and wants to check if something's in front of it, then do this. If he's looking left, now we have to switch the values and it's all this complicated stuff. So if you just do that, that's a fun little thing that you can actually uh, do and save you some time and be more efficient. So that's gonna be it for today. Go and like, go and subscribe. Let's try to hit 100 likes this time. And uh, and yeah, let me get, let me know what you guys want next and I will see you guys next time. Peace.